Hello. Um, today, I'm going to talk about a film that is 10 years old this year, and that is uh, The Master, which um, is about a World War II veteran, well, um, <clears throat> Freddie Quill, played by Joaquin Phoenix, who, um, you know, he, uh, after the war, you know, he has... Uh, issues, difficulties, PTSD, um, trauma, whatever you like to say, um, uh, shell shocked as it would be, the, as would be the saying back then, um, and so you know he's trying to do various things after you know his military service and. Um, You know, he works at a department store, you know, taking pictures of people. Um, afterwards, he works on a farm, and, you know, throughout this, we see him uh, making, like, like moonshine. And um, a worker of, uh, at the farm, or, yeah, he becomes ill. And people think he poisoned him when, you know, he's like, like if you drink this properly or whatever, you're, you'll be fine. But guy drank it fast and he uh, got sick. And um, yeah, he goes and he on the run after this, and he finds a ship and he gets on board, and then. Meets Lancaster Dodd, played by Philip Seymour Hoffman, as well as his wife, played by Amy Adams, Peggy. And um, they're part of something called The Cause, which, you know, it's like, you know, it, it's like Scientology in a way, and um, a mixture of various other things, but. That's a big one, and um, also has people like Laura uh, Laura Dern, Jesse uh, Plemons, and um, Rami Malek. Um, you know, it's a very good film. Um, it's also quite sad because you know throughout the film you see Lancaster and Freddie having a like a bond, but you know throughout the film it's like you know is he. At least for me, like, is he Lancaster using Freddy or like, is he just using them and all that and saying how, like, you know, like we've met in previous life and trying to figure out where and how your body's a vessel and you're basically born every, every so often your spirit goes into a different body and all this sort of stuff. And it's. You know, how we've been there for, like, you know, like, been doing this for, like, uh, trillions of years, uh, despite, you know, it's like the Earth being around, you know, uh, some billion years, but, you know, trillions. And uh, it's just interesting how just this relationship, really, that's the thing I really want to just sort of, like, talk about, you know, especially when re-watching this, because... You know, there's a lot of stuff to this movie, you know, with Freddy and, you know, how he, you know, how he has mistakes that he and regrets. Like, he had a girlfriend, though, he was very young, still in high school, and how he uh, said to her that he'd return, but, you know, he didn't. And how he was essentially going to marry her and they'd have a family but you know he went off to war and when he came back it's just he's just going you know and from place to place doing various jobs and just sort of just wandering around just in a way and uh that is something that he does sort of like want to do is go back to Doris and spoiler by the time he does 
at the end of the film, he finds out she's been married uh, for quite some time and has a couple boys and has moved to Alabama. And, you know, that's, a, that's unfortunate. But again, you know, considering what we've seen throughout the film, uh, it is sort of understandable. He says he's going to come back for her. You know, he's at war, he comes back home, but he doesn't go back, you know. And, you know, he, you know, he's trying to, you know, readjust to society. And it seems like when he, he meets Lancaster, it seems like this guy seems to understand something that he doesn't know or might... help uh, enlighten him uh, regarding, you know, something that he doesn't completely have a grasp on. And, you know, this he's like a teacher, obviously. Um, and, you know, Freddie just seems to want acceptance and love and all this good stuff, but he just uh, isn't there's just various things he's got that he, you know, wants to deal with and wants to, you know, you obviously see he wants to be better. He wants to be a somebody who just is able to just live as normal as possible, like, before the war, though we don't know too much about uh, his life prior to the war. Um, we hear certain things about his parents, you know, his dad's dead, he's drunk, and his mom is in a mental institution, and just, you know, it's very unfortunate, and obviously it's like he also another thing with this film you know like yeah oh, we're like you know humans are not animals and we should not act like animals and people you know many times act with um you know act in animal behaviors at times when we shouldn't and uh, the lancaster you know he spouts this off but then at times when he is questioned on things about the cause and this sort of like, you know, belief system that he has and he is also um, instilled with other people, such as his second wife and uh, uh, and others around them that we see a decent number of people are uh, joined and together and all really believe in what he is saying and how you know he he also seems to fall into these seems trappings that he says we shouldn't fall into like you know he goes and yells and swears and is like vulgar and all this stuff like like fairly animal like and yet he also chastises freddy for at times being like that you know he Freddie, we see, you know, beat up people who question or or doubt uh, uh, Lancaster. He just, you know, he, you know, Freddie gets chastised, yet Lancaster doesn't. Obviously, he's unable to uh, refrain himself at times when he's questioned and it's. You know, obviously it's interesting, you know, we have certain things within us, but, you know, we should repress them. But the thing is, if you repress them, then that uh, means that they can come out very out in the open. And obviously you shouldn't repress uh, basic human behavior, um, but you can learn to... Uh, uh, 
uh, channel it correctly. Channel at times when it's right, like to be angry or sad or, you know, whatever the case may be. And, you know, there's also another thing with Freddy is you know, obsessed with sex and women. And, you know, in the beginning and at the end, you see him with a sand, uh, like sculpture on the beach of a, of a woman, of a woman's body. And, you know, it's, uh, a lot of ways it's like, it's quite sad, but, you know, and especially when, you know, being a soldier out, or in, or in his case, you know, he was in the Navy, uh, as we was out on a ship and, you know, working on those and, <clears throat> you know, at times when I had to uh, go into combat, he would. It's just, uh, you know, this is a, just a very good film. It's very interesting. And I, I always enjoy rewatching this every so often. This is another Paul Thomas Anderson film. You know, made this five years after There Will Be Blood. This is the last time Philip Seymour Hoffman and him worked together because two years after, two years later, Philip Seymour Hoffman passed away. And um, it's very unfortunate. And uh, yeah, you know, since, uh, you know, with, with the exception of uh, There Will Be Blood, you know, they uh, worked together fairly consistently from, uh, um, you know, Boogie Nights, Magnolia, Punch Drunk Love, and The Master, and this was the last time they worked together. Philip Seymour Hoffman got nominated for an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor, Amy Adams for Best Supporting Actress, and Joaquin Phoenix for Best Actor. Um, I think the screenplay at least should have been nominated. I know a lot of people say, you know, Best Picture and Director should have uh, been like bestowed upon this film also and other um, awards one could think of but yeah I do definitely think screenplay should have been a big one but I don't know it's it's unfortunate um, that sometimes when you watch a film you know uh, over the years uh, especially after it's been out and perhaps like it's been acknowledged that some award shows and then you see it and it's like you know it should have been at least acknowledged um for multiple awards if not maybe won an award or two um obviously quentin tarantino won best uh, original screenplay for Django unchained that year i think it was fairly deserving myself but you know uh, had paul thomas anderson been nominated i could possibly see him you know deservingly uh taking it taking a home at oscar but you know yeah as time goes on obviously you know with stuff like awards you look back at them and you're like you know some sometimes those award shows uh do get it right in certain cases and then at other times they don't and i think with the master there was a good lack of uh recognition i mean uh, the three main uh, uh, performers consistently got nominated for Best Actor, Best a Supporting Actor, and Best Supporting Actress. So, you know, that was always, you know, pretty consistent uh, throughout the board. But, you know, outside of um, uh, those three, you know, maybe other awards shows like Smaller would give it nominations for best picture director and screenplay and you know sure like you know won some of those but those aren't the ones that people really talk about much you know like academy awards baftas golden globes critics choice award sag wga dga pga all that stuff gets acknowledged more and um and in many ways there are a lot of reasons as to why but in some ways, you know, perhaps some other awards might be deserving of a lot of recognition, too. Um, 
like the independent film awards or like uh, spirit awards or like one of those something like that um i don't i forget the name of those awards that that award show offhand for whatever reason but you know that does have a decent amount of uh coverage but not at all as much as i think others should though of course this is not like an independent film this was made by the weinstein company or at least produced by it and uh yeah this is a good uh blu-ray and has dvd um back beyond it has outtakes additional scenes with the uh, Music by Johnny Greenwood. Unguided Message, uh, which is an eight minute short behind the scenes. There's teasers and trailers, and a 58 minute documentary about Let There Be Light, which is John Houston's documentary about Vietnam, uh, about World War II veterans. And um, yeah. Want to also show you the inside and there is a picture of uh, Lancaster Dodd, as well as on the disc. It's like a postcard. There's the DVD, but then it's also, if I can take that out carefully. There's this, you could, uh, I guess, reverse the cover of, if you really wanted and have this as the cover if you wanted. Though, of course, the bonus helps, uh, you know, the bonus uh, features and all the stuff of the write-up on the back. You wouldn't be able to really read properly unless, you, of course, you either tuck it out or you look through... Blue uh, of that case. And uh, we'll put this back carefully. I don't want to rip it. Okay, come on. There you go. Slowly. Amy Adams does a very good job in this film. You know, she's great. Um, she's somebody who should uh, have an Academy Award. Joaquin Phoenix, of course, won for the Joker. Um, though I do think that he probably should have won earlier, but like for Gladiator or something like that. Philip Seymour Hoffman, of course, won for Capote. Deserving of that, I believe. Sorry, Phoenix for... Um, uh, when he was up for Walk the Line. Um, but Amy Adams, you know, um, she was great. And I do think she should have had uh, gotten an Academy Award for, like, The Fighter and perhaps uh, David or uh, also um, American Hustle, both by David O. Russell. But um, this year, unfortunately, uh, she didn't really have a chance at winning because uh, that was the year of um, Anne Hathaway winning for Les Miserables. And, well, I might talk about that a bit uh, next time, because I've been going through a bunch of films lately from 2012 as well as 2007. I kind of thought another way of connecting those two years, aside from There Will Be Blood and uh, The Master with Paul Thomas Anderson making those films, I, th I think I'm going to make another uh, a video next week about just some of the various uh, films that came out last year, some of the ones I really like, you know, and um, not that I will uh, discuss them in completely great detail, but, you know, maybe sometime later after like the 10th anniversary, you know, I'll talk about those and 
some other point in time, but I just want to try and see if I like that. It's an idea I have had for a little bit, and I thought maybe the next video might be a great time to see if that works for me and if I like it. Um, hopefully you'll like it too, but if, if it kind of becomes like a big thing where I'm just talking all over the place, which I kind of did here. I apologize for that, but, you know, this movie is just really fantastic. It's just um, one of those films that uh, I think deserves to be talked about more. It's very good and well done. I just love it. But it's one of those films also where, you know, I don't watch it a whole lot because, you know, I don't know if you, one would really want to, but I just don't want to you know, consistently uh, subject myself to a story like this where, it, you know, it's fairly sad, you know, with Freddy and everything. You want him to be better and have a great life and everything, but, you know, he doesn't always do himself favors. Plus, you know, with the, having, like, shell-shocked and all. And, of course, back then they didn't know exactly how to treat that back then um so there's that on top of everything it's just it's one of those films that's it's, it's just one of those films that's very good but you know sometimes it's like you don't want to always watch it consistently it's not like say star wars which i love where i can watch it you know any time and just uh, enjoy it from beginning to end um this is a film where every so often I'll be in the mood to watch it and I'll watch it and I'll enjoy it. And, um, yeah, it's just, uh, just incredible. Um, if you haven't seen this film, um, I do recommend it, but, uh, if you have, um, obviously say what you like uh, about it, if you do enjoy it or what you don't like about it in the comment section if you want i do i know i did mention certain things that pertain to the end but there's a lot more to this film than just some of those things but uh yeah i kind of wanted to give a decent amount of a like an encompass uh, various aspects of the film because it's just one of those films that's just really incredible and it's like you know it's just yeah, I, I I just love it. I think it's great. And um, it would be great to see more people talking about it. Um, so, yeah. Um, that's really all I have uh, today. Um, next week I will discuss some of the other films from 2010 that I really enjoy. Um, hopefully that will turn out pretty good. And hopefully, you know, if you or interested in that, you'll watch all the way through, and, uh, hopefully it won't be a complete bore. Uh, yeah, I <clears throat> hope all of you are doing well, hope all of you are having a great day, hope you're having a great weekend, and, you know, in this week, you know, just, you know, set your clocks back uh, an hour and all that stuff, so, you know, get an extra hour of sleep, at least here in America. I know other places of the world, they don't really do that. But uh, I hope if you, you know, you did that here in America, um, hopefully your sleeping uh, schedule and everything isn't completely out of whack. Um, and I'll uh, see you all next time. Have a great day, weekend, and week. Take care.